welcome to the Fat Quarter Shop YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all of our latest videos and tutorials. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Debbie. And we're with the Fat Quarter Shop. Today we're going to sh show you how to machine stitch applique using fusible web. We're going to walk you through all of the tools that you need, preparing the pattern, and stitching the piece using both a blanket stitch and a straight stitch. Let's uh, get started. Okay, great. First you need your pattern. And today we're going to use this cute little cat pattern supplied to us by um, Ann Sutton from Bunny Hill Designs. What you need to be very sure of, Chelsea, is when you're going to do uh, blanket stitch or applique or uh, applique using a heat and bond product, that your pattern is reversed. So what you will be looking at is the exact opposite of the way you actually want it to be on your piece when you're finished. Usually it will say that in the introduction of a book or a pattern, it might actually say that on the pattern. But if you don't see the words that this pattern has been reversed, you're going to want to test it first and be sure that all of your applique pieces are going to be facing the right direction. So we know today that this is reversed for us and, we're and we will be ready to go. The next thing is the fusible product that you're going to be using. And my favorite is Heat and Bond Light. These packages contain a sheet that's 17 inches wide by a yard and a half long. So you can get quite a few shapes out of this piece. What other products are available for Fusible Web and why do you prefer this one? Well, the other one that I've used is called Wonder Under and that is also a great product. So if you use that, that's great. I prefer this one mm -hmm. because it has um, a really good adhesive bond on the back of it and it's kind of uh, texturized so you can definitely tell the difference between the side you're going to be tracing on and the side that you're going to be fusing from. Mm -hmm. It also does not separate from the paper so you can store this product for a very long time and not have to worry about the fuse part of it separating from the uh, paper portion. So I use this on everything. Okay. I love it. Okay, um, the next thing that you're going to be using is an item, uh, something to trace with. So today we're using the Sew Line fabric pencil, which I love. Uh, this product is easily washed out of fabric. It also has an eraser that you can even erase the line from your fabric. On so fabric. if you make a mistake, yeah, you okay. can just erase your line. So I love this product. It's nice. Uh, hold, uh, it works, yep, good grip, works great. So we'll be using that to trace with. Um, then you're going to be needing some paper scissors. You're not going to want to use your fabric scissors for working with this kind of paper. Okay. So I just use a pair of Fiskars, okay. which are great. And then once we actually cut out the product, we'll be using our good, precise, uh, sharp Ginger scissors. Um, uh, kind of an interesting thing is we're going to be cutting from with paper and it, adhesive on the back, cutting through paper, but you need the precision of a really sharp okay. uh, pair of scissors so to do that. So you wouldn't use the paper scissors I wouldn't use with these, the no, because you're not going to get a really sharp edge around okay. your design. And how do you ensure that your fabric scissors are going to stay sharp, even though you're cutting with the paper on it? Um, what I like to do is actually have three pair. A okay. pair that's just for fabric, nothing else, no fusible product. A pair that I can use to cut, that will cut very precisely, but mm -hmm. that I can use to cut when, on my fabric. And then a pair just for paper. So if you're really particular, you should really have three pairs. Yeah. Okay, and then the thread. Um, today we're using the Aerofill, and I'm using black so that you'll be able to see it once we start our stitching. Um, black also enhances the edge of your design, so it really st stands out from your uh, design, that your, your quilt that you're working on. If you prefer, you can always use a color that uh, matches the background. You can do it that way too. There's lots of different choices here. Mm -hmm. um, a variegated thread is always nice to use too, but for today we're going to be using the black thread. Uh, your iron, very important to have a good iron. Today we're using the Olissa brand iron, which I use at home and I love. This is a great iron. You're going to have it set at a medium setting and no steam for adhering the, um, the glue onto the back of the fabric. Okay. And then light box. Um, there are two ways to trace this. Um, I like to use this light box. It's very easy. It's actually a little box with a light bulb on inside. You lay your pattern on top of it and your fabric, your fusible on top of that. And you can see your pattern beautifully and you just do the tracing. Where would you find a product like this? Um, I actually think I got this one at Joann's, but okay. you can get them online too. It's called a light tracer box. Okay, and if you don't have one of these available, how would you trace 
um, onto the feasible web. Very easy. You put this onto a window. You put your pattern up against a window. Tape it onto the window. Get your fusible product up on top of it. And then just stand at your window and trace. You can also do it on a glass top mm -hmm. coffee table if that works. So there's several other ways. You don't really need a light box. I just have one because I do a lot of this kind of applique. So we're ready to trace our pattern. So I've got my pattern on my light box. We want to be sure and put the fusible side down on our pattern and the paper side on top. and I'm just going to start tracing. And just go really slow, work on one little section at a time, doesn't have to be a continuous line with your pencil, but you wanna be sure that you're copying exactly on top. This is the line that you will be cutting from. So I can make sure it's accurate. Yeah, make sure it's accurate. Okay, there's our cat. Now you have to make a choice. This is a pretty big solid piece of fusible that's going to go onto your fabric. Um, if you don't want to have all this glue on your fabric, what I do is just fold the piece in half, use your paper scissors, make a slit, and I'm gonna cut out a lot of that bulk. What is the purpose of cutting the glue out? If, it, if you're doing a lot of fusible, your piece can get very heavy with okay. all of that glue on the back. And so you just need about um, a quarter inch all the way around to keep, it. to keep it glued onto your fabric. Okay. Since the tail is very thin, I won't cut up into mm -hmm. the tail, but you can see that I'm taking out a good portion of a that. A lot of glue yeah. that would have been stuck, stuck on your fabric. Right, and just okay. leaving that. And you can also trim away any excess. Um, you don't want to cut on the line. You want to cut about a quarter of an inch away from the line. And why do you keep that quarter of an inch away? When you actually fuse this onto the fabric, then you will be cutting exactly on, on the line. The and that brings okay. the glue all the way out to the very edge of your product, um, which keeps the item glued down very nicely. I have done this on many projects. I've washed my projects many, many times. Never had this come up at all or fray. So um, we're now ready to go ahead and fuse this onto our fabric. This is the fabric we've chosen to make our cat out of. Very important. You want to fuse onto the wrong side, not onto the right side. Okay. And textured side down. Yes, that you want the textured side down and your uh, pencil line facing up to you. So if you're doing a design where your fabric is patterned, you're going to want to be very careful that you get it lined up, get everything nice mm -hmm. and straight, and lay it on there. Again, we're going to be using the Oliso iron on a medium setting with uh, no steam. The, you're going to want to read the manufacturer's instructions on how to fuse this product. Mm -hmm. All products are a little different. The instructions on heat and bond say to lay your iron on here for two seconds no and steam. no steam. All you want to do is get the glue transferred to the fabric. You don't want to melt the glue. Okay. Okay, so that's very important. We won't be melting the glue until we actually put it on our background fabric, okay? And I just lightly press it just to get it down there, you know, just to get it so it won't come off. And then two seconds. across the whole piece. Now we're going to let this cool for a minute and then cut it out. And again, I'm using my scissors that are really good and precise, but that can also cut mm -hmm. through fabric and paper. So once it's cooled, you can start um, anywhere you want. Just cut into the fabric and cut exactly on the line. Now you can imagine if you had actually cut out the fusible on the line and then laid it on your fabric to fuse it, you're going to have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. So the, the reason why you want to leave that quarter inch seam allowance all the way around your piece is so that you cut through the paper right on the line and it brings the glue all the way to the outside edge so it'll never come up on your, on your fabric. Okay, we're almost all the way around the cat. Okay, so here's what the backside looks like.
With the gap. Uh-huh, with no glue mm -hmm. in the center, just around the edges to hold the piece down onto the background fabric. Okay, so we'll just discard that. Now you've got your background fabric. So the first thing you have to do is peel the paper off. So you just make a little twist, which breaks the paper. It Slip your finger in between, and then just be sure that the glue is staying on the fabric, which it will. And you can see it. You can see the shiny shines. on the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you're going to center your piece on your background fabric. Be sure you have it in the right place, because once you press it down, there's no going back. <laughs> Now, using the same setting, medium setting, no steam, mm -hmm. now is when you really want your piece, the glue, the glue to, to melt, melt into the fabric. And then I also flip it over and go on the back side. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure. And then we are ready to go do our decorative stitch around the outside edge. Okay, now we're ready to sew. We've got our machine set on the blanket stitch, which on the Bernina 153 is stitch number 25. I have my needle in the down position so that it always stops in the down position. We'll start on a nice, gentle, easy curve, and I'll start by rolling my needle down into the fabric just on the edge of the cat and the background fabric. Okay, we're ready to go. We're going to start out very slow. And then when you stop, you want to have your needle always on the right-hand side, on okay. the background side. You don't want to stop with your, your stitch onto the fabric, because mm -hmm. then you're going to leave a, a space. So every couple stitches, you're going to want to pivot your fabric. So when you get to a curve, stop in the down position, and just pivot your piece just a little bit. Just go nice and slow. Do a couple stitches at a time. And then do your moving. Just important to remember to stay and stop on the outside edge. And as soon as we get down around the foot, I will show you how to pivot around a corner. Okay, so I'm going to go real slow. Stop on the outside edge. Okay, lift it and turn. Take one stitch. Stop on the outside edge. Turn it one more time. Move it again. Just go around one stitch at a time. It keeps it really nice and smooth. And then you can just continue around all the rest of the curves just like that, going very slow, one stitch at a time, stopping and pivoting. Having your needle in the down position is so helpful because it holds your place and your piece does not get out of alignment. And you will just continue on all the way around till you get to the other side. Okay, so we're almost reaching that point where I'm going to show you how to pivot around a corner. And that's the corner we're going to be pivoting right at the neck. So I'm going to stitch to that point and stop. Let's 
go real slow here. Okay, turn just a little bit, take a stitch, and then turn again. Don't let it complete that stitch. And you just do that until you get all the way around the corner. It takes some practice and it takes time, but you'll know exactly where to stop and start as you practice a little bit more. And there you go. Okay, so take our piece out of the machine. And now we're going to pull the threads to the back. Just pull on one of the threads and get the little loop, stick a pin in the loop, and pull it back. And then you can just tie it off in a knot. I'm not sure that it would ever come loose, but I always like to tie it off. Tie it off and then just clip your threads really close and do the same to where you started. And then you're finished. So now we're going to do the straight stitch. On this stitch, you can use your regular sewing foot, which on the Bernina 153 is a 37. You're going to want to have your regular straight stitch on, mm -hmm. but you're going to have to go ahead and turn your machine stitch width from 2.5 to 1.5. You want a really tiny little stitch width. And also, keep your needle in the down position. So, you go ahead and put your piece in. Lower your needle about an eighth of an inch into your applique um, symbol and go ahead, lower your foot and start out just really slow and we'll just start stitching all the way around. It'll just take little tiny stitches and those little stitches make it real easy to go around a curve. You can also stop and start. and I stay about an eighth of an inch into my applique design, not on the edge. And I'll show you how to go around a curve. Okay, we're gonna keep our needle in the down position and then just pivot a couple stitches at a time. Till you're all the way around. Real tight curves, you'll just take one stitch at a time. And that makes a nice smooth edge. So you'll stitch right to where you started, okay, and stop, and now we're going to tie off. So you'll grab one of those threads and pull the little loop in the back, and then with a pin you'll be able to get your needle inside that loop and pull it forward and then on this one as well when you're using little tiny stitches this one is a little trickier okay once you have your two threads from the beginning and your two threads from the end you can just tie your knot.
and then just be sure to clip real close and you're all set. We hope you enjoyed our video. Be sure to subscribe to the Fat Quarter Shop YouTube channel to stay up to date with all of our videos and tutorials. If you have any questions, tips, or tricks about machine applique using fusible web, be sure to leave a comment on this video. And visit us anytime at www.fatquartershop.com. Thank you.